Good evening, Ian. You have no idea how much I enjoyed watching your most recent episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program you produce about once a month where you make an unintentionally humorous attempt to misrepresent various scientific topics in an effort to demonstrate that a dead Jewish mystic who was allegedly nailed to a tree in the Middle East two millennia ago was actually the human incarnation of what can only be described as possibly the most inept deity in literature, that the world is only 6,000 years old, and that snakes are capable of giving clear and lucid dietary advice on the benefits of eating fruit to housewives. At first I thought that you may be off feeding pies to starving Africans, but then I began to get worried that you might have been kidnapped by bandits while out searching for Noah's lost ark, and that you may have been chained to a radiator in a basement somewhere, and though your captors had sent clear instructions regarding their demands, nobody was prepared to stump pump the fifteen bucks for the ransom, and everyone generally agreed that airing the Star Wars holiday special was a bad idea the first time round, and they were not prepared to make the same mistake twice, even if he turned a fat bloke with a Mensa card his freedom. It's such a jubilant relief to find that you have in fact simply been spending the summer out on the road telling young impressionable children that modern science is completely wrong, and that they should believe in the stories in the Bible, because the Bible says that they're true. It's good to see that you're doing your part to ensure that McDonald's will always have qualified staff to underpay and the Republican Party will have voters. But enough of the pleasantries. Let's get down to business. The fact that in your video you appeared to be wearing your Indiana Juby adventure wear was not entirely lost on me. And of course, the reason for your attire became relevant as soon as we found out that you were going to be talking about the adventures of similarly dressed Christian researchers in South America. I must admit that I was intrigued to hear your latest revelations when I saw the title of your video, and let me assure you in, after watching only a minute of it, I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> For the benefit of the viewer, Ian's presentation was all about a recent expedition to some place south of Mexico by a team of fundamentalist Christian researchers who had heard rumours of cave paintings depicting people hunting dinosaurs, and they wanted to see them for themselves. Ian spends a whole 15 minutes interviewing one of these researchers over Skype from the comfort of the TARDIS-like TV studio in the back of his van, delivering us a feast of fuck-knucklery and unadulterated unintelligence that only a fully-fledged card-carrying Mensa can achieve. But I digress. For the educated amongst us, the alarm bell started going off once you muttered this golden nugget. At a secret location in the heart of the Amazon rainforest, a tribe of indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. As late as the 1940s, foreign explorers who had contacted this tribe reported the tribal members spoke of a large creature living in that area whose description sounded like no other creature known there. But I wonder just how many bullshit stories I've heard over the years that involve things happening in a secret location. That involves an unnamed group of locals nearby telling of amazing and improbable occurrences. In fact, a story about an amazing find deep in the Amazon rainforest, known only to a local tribe and talked about by explorers who have visited the area, sounds hmm, awfully familiar. Legend says that a crystal skull was stolen from a mythical lost city in the Amazon. Supposedly built out of solid gold, guarded by the living dead. Oh yeah, it sounds like the plot to an Indiana Jones movie. 
which wasn't entirely lost on Vance Nelson, the guy you interviewed in your presentation and who produced the Indiana Jones-style trailer for his news story about examining the pictographs on his channel, Science for God. I mean, come on, Ian. As late as the 1940s, stories told by unnamed foreign explorers who talked to unidentified indigenous tribespeople who lived in an unspecified and, above all, secret location deep in the Amazon rainforest? That's almost as batshit stupid as the stories of the retired U.S. Navy Admiral who, according to his secret diary, back in the 1920s, while exploring the Arctic, flew his airplane into a hole in the earth up in the North Pole and had a jolly adventure meeting the king and queen of the land inside the hollow earth. It speaks volumes that on making this game-changing discovery, rather than publishing his findings in serious scientific journals or even submitting an article to popular mainstream science magazines, Vance Nelson instead posted his findings in a YouTube video. We are presented with a four-minute video, a good portion of which looks like it was shot with a hidden camera with its lens poking out through a circular hole in a box, where Vance, fully kitted out in his patented beige Juby Jones jungle outfit, complete with a sleeveless top with its numerous large pockets, like the one that you usually wear when looking for footprints in paving slabs in Glenrose, points at rock paintings deep inside a mysterious cave which appears to be rather brightly lit by the sun, and in your interview he talks about the authenticity of these pictographs and how he knows that they're real. Let's have a look at that for a moment, shall we? When you take a look at pictographs elsewhere in the world, such as in Australia, the Australian Aborigines, uh, or you take a look at the Bushmen in Africa, and you take a look at those pictographs that are supposedly thousands of years old, the ones that we looked at in the Amazon are clearly uh, just as old, if not older. They seem to be more faded. They seem to be more weathered than these other clearly authentic pictographs elsewhere on the planet. Seriously, Ian? Their authenticity is verified because they look more weathered than other clearly authentic pictographs? Not through scientific study, through chemical analysis of the rock or the pigments, for instance, or even anthropological study, like finding out who actually painted them and if there were actually people living near there at the time they were alleged to have been painted. No. They look more weathered than other verified pictographs found in other places. But I must admit, this is definitely the clincher for me. Now, the other thing that the professor points out is you have three people praying to the sun. This really isn't something that you would uh, expect a modern faker to depict. And uh, there's other animals that are there as well, and they're accurate. And so why wouldn't this dinosaur-like image be accurate as well? And so there's just a lot of different... Yes. Having other stick figures depicting other animals nearby definitely makes the dinosaur authentic. And let's not forget that the local guide that just happens to be a cave painting specialist definitely says that they're authentic. And nobody at all would ever think of showing people worshipping the sun if they were fake, despite the fact that if the people who drew the paintings worshipped the sun, they would be more likely to actually draw pictures of the sun rather than pictures of them worshipping it. When you go to church, you don't see a whole heap of paintings and sculptures of people worshipping Jesus. You see pictures and sculptures of Jesus for you to worship. And another thing. In the interview, he clearly states that he was able to examine the pictographs from inches away. Yet the only video footage he has published so far looks like something out of the Blair Witch Project. Are you seriously telling me that, given the planning that goes into an expedition into the Amazon rainforest, nobody thought to bring a lightweight tripod? And what's with the black shadow around the edge of the footage? It almost makes you think that the footage was filmed in secret because it was actually shot at a tourist attraction where they don't let you take photos. By now, a light should have come on above your head, telling you that this guy is blowing smoke up your ass. But then again, the obvious bullshit he's coming out with is no different to the odious pig shit that you spread liberally about when you tell us about how human footprints have been found in paving slabs out in the woods in Glenrose, Texas. And Ian, there's another point that you're missing. It's a really big one, and though your friend Vance touched upon it, you missed it completely. 
There are a large number of species that have survived, relatively unchanged from a morphological point of view since the time of the dinosaurs millions of years ago. You keep mentioning them. You know, things like coelacanths and horseshoe crabs. Reptiles such as crocodiles and alligators and fishes such as sharks are all top of the food chain predators that have survived relatively unchanged within their respective families, classes and phyla, within their respective environments for millions of years. So it would not be a game-changing discovery to find that various species of dinosaur had also survived in a recognisable form until today. It wouldn't disprove evolution, as there is nothing in evolution that said that they couldn't. If someone was to capture or kill a modern example of a sauropod and present the specimen for scientific examination, and it was confirmed that it was what it was claimed to be, sure, it would be a scientific sensation, as it is when any hitherto mythic creature previously unknown to science is confirmed to exist. Gorillas in Africa were unknown to science a little over 150 years ago, and mountain gorillas in East Africa were not discovered until the 20th century. They really exist, but previously, despite there being many reported sightings of them and the local people telling stories about them, science had to consider them just as real as Bigfoot or the abominable snowman, because nobody had previously managed to produce a specimen of one that could be scrutinised and verified as being authentic. On the other hand, and this is the important point. The discovery of a remnant species left over from the Jurassic era is still alive today, despite being curiously absent from the fossil record for 150 million years, even though it was the size of a house, is entirely possible and consistent with modern science and evolutionary biology. However, finding evidence of people alive and hunting sauropods 150 million years ago before the evolution of mammals isn't. And despite a long-running cartoon series, a plethora of specials and spin-offs, and two live-action movies as documentary evidence, the Flintstones aren't real. Is it a coincidence that your buddy Vance Nelson, who, like you, also makes his money roaming around North America with a travelling sideshow packed up in the back of his van so he can lie to children about science, has a book out all about how the mythical dragons of legend and lore are actually dinosaurs? Don't you think it's rather convenient, with emphasis on con, that he should also happen to have a rather badly shot video of his recent expedition to the middle of nowhere where he discovered paintings in a secret location? How about the local experts not being willing to say that it's a picture of a dinosaur on camera? Don't you think that's a bit suspicious? You can call me a sceptic mainly because it would be accurate, but I'm calling bullshit on the whole thing and saying categorically that until your buddy Vance Nelson tells the world exactly where these paintings are, which South American tribe he was talking to and who the local scientific expert was who accompanied them on their little adventure so that somebody else, less biased, can independently investigate them, this whole thing is a hoax that your buddy is using to sell copies of his latest coffee table book filled with big pictures and little else, and to get church groups and schools to pony up $1,500 a time plus gas for him to visit them with his travelling travesty. In the meantime, we'll go and file your body's video in the box with the Yeti footprints, the photos of flying saucers and the Loch Ness monster, and your intellectual integrity. Namely, that big box with the dog-eared sticky label that reads, could exist, but without more convincing evidence, we have a hard time.